Hello, Hi, Adolfo. <laughs> oh, we lost Adolfo. This is strange. There's only three students in the class. Renee, George, and Darth Maul, who I think just stepped away. So let's try oh. again. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Selma. No, Selma. Hi. All right. Do, hi, Camilla. Hello. Hello. Hi, Camilla. Anybody there? <laughs> Right. I don't know what's going on today. It's a little weird. Joe, can you uh, enter the class? And hey, Seuss, can you enter the class? Well, hey, Seuss, are you using Google Chrome? Right. I don't know what's going on today. It's a little weird. Okay, because, uh, oh, that's Google Chrome. No, you want the official Google Chrome, not Google Chrome. Try using Google, you might have better luck. If you're using Safari or IE, well, then Jesus, I would try Google Chrome. They tell us teachers use Google Chrome because of issues of using other browsers. So I recommend go ahead and download it. There's still plenty of room in the class. Camilla, the reason I muted you is there was a lot of feedback coming from your connection, what you need to do is close down your um, other browser tab that's open, and he's gone. So there we go. <laughs> All that work. <laughs> is it April the third? Is it October the thirty-first? No idea. Strange things are happening. Yeah. It's certainly not April the 1st. Hi, Christina. Can you see the button for the Hangout, Christina? Hello, Adolfo. You're so quiet. Are you on mute? I have some issues. I know, I know. I didn't want to bring that up. You know, I try to keep personal comments to a minimum. <laughs> Only Renee finds my jokes funny. What kind of issues are you having? Is it um, connection, bandwidth? Some Google plugins. Google plugins? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Are you using Google Chrome? Yeah. Okay, good. George, you using Chrome? Yes, I am. Good, good. I always found that weird. Google came out with Chrome instead of going to like diamond, gold, or silver. Interesting how they chose the word Chrome. You're using Opera. Well, it appears to be working for you, Renee. No, and I'm not. I'm just being real Chrome. <laughs> okay, Renee, go stand in the corner. Oh. <laughs> so this is a rather strange class. I was just kind of waiting for things to fill up a little bit. Maybe we can just have some general conversations. Looks like there are some connection issues. Um, uh, don't worry, George. We will do some grammar. And do you know what grammar we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the um, subject pronouns and object pronouns. Oh, I was going to call it something else. Okay. <laughs> I was going to talk about uh, Renee's personal favorite. I know it's in one of his top ten. But Renee loves reflective pronouns and adjective clauses. Oh, yeah. What is that? <laughs> I have no idea, really. <laughs> I, I just I don't know grammar. We see. I see somebody else has joined again. Victor, hello, Victor. Hi, teacher. Sorry about that because I tried to enter before, 
and I was using my my friend's um, account, and it was appearing Camila, and I thought, oh, you're talking to Camila? Or with me? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not going to make any comments if I see the name. That's who I'll refer to. Oh, okay. I remember her last night. Sorry. We're we're hearing a really bad echo. Can you check to make sure that you don't have the uh, lobby tab open? Okay, just a second. Sure, I'll mute you until then. It's like having a megaphone. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? So, yeah, we're going to talk about reflective... And now it's better? I don't know. Uh. Oh, hold on. Yes, it's better. I can only tell when I speak, so much better. It looks like we have a small class today. Hi, Darth Maul. Um. Hi, Simon. Hi, dude. Good. How, how are things in the universe today? Oh, it's it's okay. Pretty cold, but it's okay. Well, you know, it's always pretty cold in deep space. Yeah, like absolute <laughs> zero. <laughs> yeah, what you need to do is capture a nice warm planet. Like Tatooine. <laughs> Tatooine, yeah, yeah, Tatooine's nice. Yeah, definitely. I'm thinking nice. about Earth, but it's kind of hard. I, you know what? I would bypass Earth. There's way too many people here. Um, the it's overcrowded, you know. It's you want to find a nice part of the universe where it's quiet, not a lot of people to disturb you, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks, Evan. Hey, you're welcome. Besides, if you've got a brand new spaceship, anytime you bring it into low Earth orbit, you're going to get hit with some sort of satellite or space debris. So you don't want to scratch up your new Death Star. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, trying to be somewhat serious here. Let's take a look at reflective pronouns and adjective clauses. Now, I'm going to do some typing and some pasting to help you guys. An adjective clause usually begins with a relative pronoun. Okay. What is a relative pronoun? Well, it's a word that relates to information in the adjective clause to a word or a phrase in the main clause. Okay? Is that right, George? Do you think I got that one right? I think so, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. George, can you tell me what are some of the most common adjective clauses? Mm. Oh, sorry, let me put it another way. Uh, some of the most common adjective clauses begin with which, uh-oh, I gave one away, relative pronouns. Which, what, why, uh, that's, that's where? some of them. Mm -hmm. I keep giving them away, darn it. <laughs> Sorry. This is grammar. I try to make it as funny as we can and as humorous. The most common adjective clauses begin with these relative pronouns. So who, which, and that. These three all refer to a noun. But who refers only to people and which refers only to things. And of course, that is kind of a compromise. It may refer to either people or things. I love using that and which in sentences myself. And what I'm going to do in a little bit, guys, is I'm going to have some tests. I want to just go over what adjective clauses are and what relative pronouns are as a bit of a refresher. Has anybody never heard of relative pronouns? Sorry. Uh, adjective clauses and relative pronouns. Is this new to anybody? Yeah, yes. for example, uh, when you are talking like this, it's new, but if you say that's why, like who, which, that, it's it starts to become a little bit easier for us. When, where. Okay. Well, here's <laughs> what I'll do then. I'll go over a lesson that I have prepared. 
we'll talk about what it is, then we'll go through a lot of examples. At the end of the class, we'll play a bit of a game, and I'll give you some links where you can do some further tests to help reinforce. Because <clears throat> I find that grammar is a very, very dry subject. It reads like a really, really badly put together manual sometimes. You're, you're reading the words, you're, you're seeing the words, but it's really hard to get absorbed into them. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about two other relative pronouns used to introduce adjective clauses. But I'm going to test you guys a little bit. Can you anybody tell me, Adolfo, anyone at all, Adolfo, <laughs> whose? What's special about this particular adjective who's? clause? Yeah. We can only use whose for people. Well, yes, because who is the form of who in what way? I'm sorry? So the word who, what does it what word is it similar to? Um, whom, who's? Anybody can the word whose, what is it what other word is it similar to? What other adjective clause or reflective pronoun? Who? Yes, Anastasia. It is the possessive form of who? Who to whom? Somebody has dogs. Who let the dogs out? Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who let the dogs out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope I never watch these classes myself. I look like such an idiot. But that's what <laughs> that's what makes it fun. Okay, so we have whose, which is the possessive form of who, and here we go. Here's another one. Whom? Laura. Can you tell me about whom? It's also related to who. Oh, uh, Laura, I hear, uh, 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 but and it's very quiet. Hello. Better. Okay, I think whom is more formal. It could be, but. No, not quite. George. Um. You're very good with grammar. Whom do you speak with? Should never end a sentence with a preposition. To whom do you speak? Oh, okay. So, George, sorry to distract you from this question. Whom is the object form of who. Look at this, Anastasia, you should be teaching the class, you have all the answer. Very good, excellent. Okay. Whose begins an adjective clause that describes something that belongs to or is part of something or someone mentioned in the main clause? Oh, that's horrible, isn't it? It's too wordy. Let me show you an example. Essentially, whose begins an adjective clause that describes something in the main clause? That something or someone must be mentioned in the main clause. Here's our example. The ostrich, whose wings are useless for flight, can run faster than the swiftest horse. Does that sound right? Does that make sense? What I would like you guys to do right now, just go ahead and type a similar sentence. You may use whose or whom. Go ahead and practice. I'll create one too.
Okay, good, good. George, you wanted to give it a try? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Take your time, guys. Okay. Oh God, no, Renee. That is not a good example. <laughs> Thank you, Engan. The president, who won, is giving his first speech. The car. Okay, George. Does that sound right? I don't know. It's not let correct. Give, let me give you another example. Well, I'll read it to you. The car whose belong to the man is red. So it's grammatically, it's not quite right. Let me give you an example of the one I wrote. The new Corvette, whose body frame is based on the C5, is much faster than a Ford pickup. Okay. Simon, I've got a question for you. Uh oh. Have you seen the second series of uh, Top Gear? Oh, you I know can't even believe ups. you would ask me that question. Of course I have. Pickups can be pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got me. Yes, they can be very fast, faster than a Corvette. Uh, bad example. All right. Let me. Let me. I want to share something with you guys. I'll share. Um, Oh, no, it's not going to let me share. So, let's start over. Well, not really start over. Let's talk about adjective clauses again. I'm going to take you on a brief overview. So, an adjective clause is used to describe a noun. We've already mentioned that. The car, comma, which is blue, belonged to Renee. Okay, the car, which is pink, belonged to George. A, rel a relative pronoun is usually used to introduce an adjective clause. Paulo, who is a Spanish teacher, lives in Antigua. So let's take a look at a few more relative pronouns. We've talked about who. Who is used for humans in subject position. Okay, who is used for humans in subject position? So for example, Laura, who is a teacher, works in Los Angeles. Whom? So let's we talked about who and we talked about whom earlier. Whom is used for humans in the object position. So remember these two. People get really confused over the difference between who and whom. Even I do that once in a while. The best way to remember is who refers to what position, George? Um, subject. Yeah, subject. And whom refers to what, Renee? What position? It's object. That's the best way to remember which one to use. This is something you might see on TOEFL or any other grammar test in the United States. Obviously, you must know what a subject of a sentence is and what the object is. Let me just quickly touch on that. When who is the subject of a verb, this is what it might look like. Let me give you a couple of sentences here. 
Who paid for the meal? What is the subject here? Who? All right, and what is the verb? Pay. Yeah. Who is the subject of the verb to pay? I've got a longer one here. I have not seen the man who lives. Oops. I have not seen the man who lives in the hut by the beach for a week. Okay. What is the subject there? This shouldn't be too hard. Renee. It's the same as the last sentence. Yeah, it's who. And who is the subject of the verb what? Live. Yeah, to live. Very good. The next sentence, I wonder who is in charge. What is the subject in this sentence? Anyone? Who? Yeah, very good. Who is the subject? And is the subject of the verb what? Is. The, yes, the verb is. A lot of people say to be. I'm going to give you a skill testing question here. Renee is gone, but I have a blinking red balloon. Ah, oh, well, maybe Renee will join us back again. Let's, let me ask you a question here. Is to be a verb? Yes. Really? Yeah. What's this in front of be? Preposition. Yeah, and what happens, what, what do we call them when we put to in front of a verb? Infinitive. Yeah, this is an infinitive, not a verb. Be is the verb. I know what you're thinking. We always refer to the verb as to be, but really that's an infinitive, if you want to be technical about it. So when you said is, I was impressed that you said is and not to be. Okay, so you guys seem to understand when who is the subject, okay? Whom is never ever the subject, okay? Let me give you some examples of whom. All right, you have a child by whom? What's the preposition? By. by. Excellent. I want you to type, everybody type, what is the preposition in the next sentence? With whom did you see Janice? With whom did you see Janice? Yeah, very good. Very good, guys. Yeah, with. Next sentence is a little different. That is the lady to whom I made the promise. That lady, no, sorry. That is the lady to whom I made the promise. That is the lady to whom, to. To. Now. The lesson I got this from, they had another example that says, that is the lady whom I made the promise to. What is wrong with that sentence? The preposition is the end of the... Go! Oh, I hate that! Yes! Never end the sentence in this, this, or this. What are those? Preposition. Yes, I love prepositions. I really do. They're great but they do not belong at the end of a sentence. I have a question. Uh-oh. Is this, no, the, is this the related sentence, to Top Gear again? No, no, no. Oh, uh, the sentence is like, uh, I know that you are the man to talk to. Is it right or wrong? Well, you're ending it in a preposition, right? You, you should always avoid that. Now, you can usually fix that by rewriting the sentence. Are you the man to whom I should talk? But it's not so, you know. <laughs> it's bigger and longer. <clears throat> okay, let me give you a couple examples here.
So don't anybody type because I'm going to paste them both. So here's the correct version of the incorrect version. Okay, so it's the same sentence, but the preposition has changed its place. So it's grammatically wrong. It is not right. Now, I've always been taught in school and in college, you should never end a sentence with a preposition. If you have a preposition and you don't want it there, well, then reword the sentence. So listen to these two sentences again. This is the lady to whom I made the promise versus this is the lady whom I made the promise to. What if you said who instead of whom in the second sentence? Which? You would still have a preposition at the end of the sentence, Adolfo. Bad. I think it would sound better. Yeah. Unfortunately, you don't make the rules. Neither do I. <laughs> so but informally, this sentence would be acceptable. acceptable. Look, look. Yeah. Informally, there's a lot of freedom. If we're just talking informally, Adolfo, the amount of errors sometimes you can pull in my own speech. Again, here I'm not here to be a, a, a teacher that's going to be hard with you guys and say. Adolfo, you should never do it this way. I'm going to tell you what you should do, and then it's really up to you to decide what you want to do. There's no grade for my class. But, yeah, oh, can we omit whom? Well, no. No. Uh, well, I'm not a lady, but thank you for that consideration. <laughs> okay, so I've gone off on a little tangent. We're still talking about reflective pronouns, only we went off onto an explanation of what whom, who and whom are. So I want to give you guys a bit of a test now. Let's, let's focus a bit more on just seeing how well you guys are at getting these. So I'm going to give you two sentences. And the first sentence... Adolfo, could you read, well, I'll call this one number one. Could you please read the first sentence? I yes. like people. They're, they are good listeners. Excellent. So based on that first sentence, what I would like you guys to do now is change it. Okay? So for example... I like people who are I good want listeners. you to make it into a single sentence. So this one would be, I like people who are good listeners. Okay? And they is the focus word here. The next example, I'm going to have you guys try. Okay, I wonder if I can bold this. No, it won't let me do it. So I'll put the word of emphasis in brackets. I bought a computer. It doesn't work very well. So how should that sentence look? What's the correct way to write that? I bought a PC. Which does, I bought a PC that which doesn't work very well. I bought a computer that doesn't work very well. That, which, which. So I see two types here. You ready for the answer? Yes. I bought a computer that doesn't work very well. Because it wasn't a Mac. No, I'm just kidding. Macs have problems too. <laughs> <laughs> All computers have problems. They're just different types. Okay, so the next sentence, and this one I'm going to read to you. So pay attention, or maybe write it down. She's a woman. She always eats nutritious food. She's a woman. 
she always eats nutritious food. So she how should this say? Nutritious food. Oh, you're cheating by shouting it out. I want to, but go ahead, type it out. She's a woman who always eats nutritious food. What? She's a woman who always eats nutritious food. She's a woman. She always eats nutritious food. Ah, oh, looks like we got a fragment or a few sentences there. Yeah. So the correct example here would be she's a woman who always eats nutritious food. Okay. The fourth sentence, or there's two sentences here. I shouldn't say fourth. Are you ready? Here we go. This is the camera. Next sentence, I bought it last week. This is the camera. I bought it last week. There are two examples for this one. So this is a camera that I bought last week, that I bought last week, that I bought last week, which I bought last week. No, it's definitely that. And I haven't seen the other. Okay, so let me read. Most of you got it correct. This is the camera that I bought last week. Also accepted is this is the camera I bought last week. Okay? It's kind of implied that it's that. Okay, I'm hearing some background noise. Whose connection is that coming from? Oh, it's gone. Perfect. All right. Yeah, why which is not correct. Well, remember, now let me go back to my lesson here. Where's the page? That is used for humans, animals, and things in a subject or object uh, position. Okay? We got some noise there. Which is used for things and animals in the subject or object position? Okay, sounds very what? similar, doesn't it? Now, generally, what I would normally do, so let me give you an example. To me, if everything that I'm writing in the sentence is important, I will write it this way. I bought the new Canon 70D, which was on sale last week. Okay? The real main point here is I bought the new Canon D. It's kind of an afterthought that is that I bought it last week. I could take the same sentence and actually say, I bought the new Canon 70D that was on sale last week. Mm -hmm. Notice the emphasis. No. So... In the first sentence, I bought the new Canon 70D. That's my main point, which was on sale last week. I've got a comma, a bit of a pause. It's a way to sort of relax. In the second sentence, I bought the new Canon 70D that was on sale last week. Okay. All right? When you write longer sentences, like I do in some of my reports, I use which a lot more. Which will always have a comma before it. Or mo most of the times it'll have a comma before it. Uh. No, no comma before that. Let's go through a few more. Uh, teacher? Yes. Why do you use generally which after comma in your report? Um... I'd have to get into an explanation of the type of writing I do. A lot of the writing I do, yeah, I can give you an example of where there's um, no comma before which, but most of the time there always is. Um, I write a lot of reports where sentences um, can be anywhere from 20 to 30 words. 
if you have a complete sentence where there's no breakup of that, it can be very hard to read after a while. So I tend to break it up, change the structure of it a little bit so it's easier to read. And usually when you're writing documents where the average sentence is 20 to 30 words, you break it up every now and then with a short sentence of 12 words. Mm. And it can become hard to follow if you're not careful. So let mm. me see here an example. Um, yes. I, I very rarely ever see a sentence, oops, where, which doesn't have a comma before, but here we go. Laura has a dog which follows her everywhere. Okay. You can use that there. Well, I would use that too. So keep in mind, listen to the difference between which and that. Which is used for things and animals in a subject or object position. Okay? And that is used for humans, animals, and things in a subject or object position. Ding. Okay? So, which things and animals that humans, things, and animals. I want to give you guys a link. And this is something maybe you can follow up on a little later on. In my writing, I never write sentences that don't have a comma before which because of the type of writing I do. In that last example, you could use both that and which. Yeah. Yeah, both work. So copy down that link. Watch it later. It's a short six-slide presentation that will help you. Uh, well, Laura, which, spell that way, which one is used more often? Thank you. Here's how I write, and each person has a different style. When it's kind of an afterthought, I use which. If I want the person to focus on everything in the sentence, I use that. Okay. okay. When I have a choice between the two. Okay. That you can use with people, which you can't. Okay, so that's the grammar part of it. So let me think. I wish I had some of my writings with me here. You probably find them very boring. Because I have to do all the grammar and everything in my head and then spit it out. When you're dealing with long sentences, that's kind of hard to do on the fly. I just, You know what it's like when you type? You just start typing. Mm -hmm. That's why I like to prepare my lessons before class. I don't have to do as much on the spot thinking. If I'm doing a project management class, that stuff is so intuitive. I do that every day. I don't have to think as much. But grammar, I don't do grammar every day. I write every day. It just comes natural. It's a little different. So let's see if I can find some other tests here. I want to do a slightly different test. I found this one earlier. Ah, here we go. So for this sentence here, the man was sick. He looked very pale. The man was sick. He looked very pale. The man who looked very pale was sick. Okay. Now I want to show you something. You are correct, but I want to show you how it's punctuated. The man who looked very pale, was sick. Okay. Excellent, Paul. Next sentence. He was sitting in the emergency room. It was very crowded. It being the emergency room. He was sitting in the emergency room. It was very crowded. Adolfo, would you like to do that one, please? I heard somebody say which. <laughs> he 
he was sitting in the emergency room, which was very crowded. Can we say oh. he was sitting in the very crowded emergency room? Well, he was sitting in a very crowded emergency room. I don't yeah. know what happened there. No, no, guys, on, oddly enough, uh, when I, I pasted the sentence, but it, 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 w it went room with a W and the comma got lost, so the, the last pasting is the correct version. Teacher? Yes. For example, like in the last sentence that is said, when you put the comma and you say which was very crowded, you are like um, making a sentence that is a uh, restriction for the last one, right? Well, how would you, let me ask you this, how would you rather write that? What would you like to write instead? Uh, yeah, I'm not saying that I would write it in a different way. I'm saying I'm trying to to compare with the things that I have in my language. You know, because okay. we we say like a restrictive sentence. Well, you are so emergency room. Because you're it's altering. not any room. No, it's an emergency room. So emergency describes room. He, we could just say this: He was sitting in the room, which was very crowded. So emergency, George, what kind of word is emergency to room? Sorry? So room is a noun. What is emergency? Yeah. Emergency. It's um, very... Yeah. Uh, it's in the hospital. It's an adjective. Yeah. In a way, it, def it describes the noun. Okay? So... Forget that part of it. So he was sitting in a room, and the next part of the sentence describes something about that room. What about it? It was very crowded. Okay. And that goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning. An adjective clause usually begins with what? A relative what? Well, no. Pronoun. An adjective clause usually begins with a relative pronoun. A word that relates to information, okay, in the main clause. And you see, that's what's happening here in this sentence. He was sitting in the emergency room, which is the main clause, which was very crowded, referring to the, main, the emergency room. Okay. Now I did promise you guys a game. Would you like to play a game or would you like to do a bit more do some more tests? Okay, nobody's saying game, so I'll continue with the test then. <laughs> You're a quiet <laughs> class tonight. Normally people say game, game. Yeah, game, okay, gonna do that. Yeah, game. but your games are scary. That's because I'm scary. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let me do another one for you. The nurse called a doctor. He came, he came quickly. So what are the different options? We, we can write this one many ways. Again, repeat please. This. The nurse called a the nurse doctor was nearby. He called to her. Sorry, uh, the nurse called a doctor. He came quickly. The nurse called the doctor. That came quickly. That came, that came, quick, that came quickly. Yes. Um, can I'm hearing a couple of different things. What if I said there was four ways of writing this one? He called to a nurse who was nearby. He called to a nurse who was nearby without a comma. Ah, no, then I a nurse whom he called to was nearby. I don't know anybody that would talk that way. Mm. Yeah, the last one is too A true. nurse whom he called to was nearby. <laughs> you know? like, unless you're trying to be funny, no one talks like that. A nurse whom he called to was nearby. Most of us would probably say he called to a nurse who was nearby. Okay?
Let's see here. So, a couple of links I want to give you right now. This is where you can take a couple of tests. And that last link I gave you on the last page is a bunch of links as well, of which this is the first link. Some excellent examples here. You can see how there's more than one way of combining these two sentences together. And also be very careful in that last example. The nurse called the doctor. He came quickly. When it, when it says he came quickly, who, does, who is he, the doctor or the nurse? Keep in mind that a nurse can nurse. be both a male or a female, as a doctor can. The nurse called a doctor. He came quickly. What, the doctor or the nurse? Doctor. Right. Anybody think nurse? Doctor. That's right. He refers directly to doctor. And the nurse called. No, it's he's referring to the doctor. If it had said the doctor called a nurse, he came quickly, who would he be referring to? Nurse. The nurse. nurse. Exactly, yes, very good. I've said this many times before. You you guys, you have a great grasp of grammar. You always you have a few questions, you're unsure in some areas, but generally your understanding of grammar is very good. It has to be when you're learning another language. What I like to try and do though is get you guys to speak more because speaking is really the main concern here. Practice speaking. And when you're speaking, if your grammar isn't perfect, don't get hung up on that. The more you practice, the better. And if you're coming to Kalingo classes two hours a night, like Renee, George, and Paul are, your pronunciation is going to get a lot better. Your ability to speak in English is going to get better. When you're new, when you're first starting out trying to speak, this is how most of us feel. Let me make sure you can see this. These are the words that we know. You want to get to a point where these are the words you know. Right? Exactly. Well, you're, you always speak Portuguese or Spanish or whatever your native language is. You live in a country where there isn't a lot of English. Mm -hmm. However, tonight you're in Canada. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You might be in the United States tomorrow or somewhere else. The great beauty of the internet is that it brings us closer together. Grammar is great for reinforcing grammar rules. You get to hear me speak, but you don't get to speak at all. Try to take on classes where there's a lot of conversation, where you have the ability to speak a lot, which is why I like games. It forces you to speak. Uh, in an hour, I have a course on business English, and I'm going to have another project management subject. You guys will speak a bit more in that. Debate, you guys will do most of the speaking. Uh, Sorry? Which? Okay, I just heard one word. So, if you have a chance, dedicate it two hours of your day to coming to Kalingo. Participate in as much conversation as you can. The more you speak, the more you'll advance to this stage here where you know many more words. Don't be quiet and shy. And keep in mind that we're all here learning. Now, somebody said, my games are scary. Why are my games scary? <laughs> Laura, why do you find my games scary? Oh, 
Oh, thanks, Raquel. That's sweet. Ah, uh, but I'm here to push you. I'm here to challenge you. I could make it. I could make easy games. No. Like here, here's an easy version of Hangman. All right, so here we go. Easy. And here's our word. There we go. Hey. Adolfo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you have, you have the letter e. Yeah, very good. You won. Yay! Yay! I'm not happy. <laughs> no. Here, here's something interesting. You'll learn this through life if you haven't already learned it now. When you're applying for a new job, when you're taking a course, if you're within this range, I don't know what that is. Let me rewrite that. So if you're applying for a job and you have about 50 to 75 percent of the job knowledge required, this is what is called the sweet spot. Let me explain the sweet spot indirectly. If you have less than 50 percent knowledge, you will always feel as though you don't know what you're doing. You'll feel lost, left behind. That's when you know less than 50% of what is required for the job. When you know more than 75%, that's when you feel bored. I hate this job. It's boring. Nothing interesting ever happens. But when you walk into a job where you have between 50 and 75% of the knowledge, that's when you feel challenged but rewarded. You enjoy what you're doing. So what I try to do is I try to challenge you within this range. I don't know if you notice this, but I test you at the beginning of every class. I go around the class asking where students are from. And what I do when I'm doing that is I'm listening to your English. I'm trying to get a sense of what your proficiency level is. And I will generally adjust the game or the class to that. So, for example, even in my games, if I find that it's too hard, I will make things a little easier so it falls in this range. So why is that? I'll say it's psychology. I don't know the science behind it. I just know that this is important and that's all I care about. I'm applying for a new job now. I believe I have about 70 to 75 percent of what is needed for that job. Okay, maybe 65, but I know I'm within that range. Okay, let me just see. That's the reason why we are here. Challenge, yeah. I will never make things too easy for you, and I'll never make things too hard. If you do like a challenge, Laura and others, I highly recommend you come to my debate classes. Paul, I'd like to pick on you for a sec. Can you tell me why you like my debate classes? Because first of all, it's fun. Second, we've got a great ability to speak a lot and speak like you no know, in an academic way. And uh, we have to think on English, think quick, and be, you know, persuasive. Yeah, uh, those are some of the very good reasons. So, yeah, it, we do have fun. But you're speaking a lot. I love that because, really, you don't want to hear me speak. I don't like grammar classes because I spend most of the time speaking. I like debate classes because you explain a lot. Ah, <laughs> uh, Laura, you know what? We'll have a game class on Friday. We've only got three minutes left. You get to think in English, speak in English, listen in English, play games in English. No, we don't play games. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's a challenge. Try it. Remember, no one here is going to make fun of you because we're all here trying to learn. And here's another valuable life lesson. If you can laugh at yourself... 
you're going to do well. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. If you do make a mistake, make a joke out of it. Have fun with it. Yeah, and again, I try to challenge you with some more words. Well, guys, class is almost over. Are there any last questions? Okay, let me give you another link because there's a lot to read up on. I've only done a very little bit tonight. This really sums up very nicely what the class was about, relative clauses and reflexive pronouns. Uh, same with the other uh, PowerPoint that I gave you. These do a good job of explaining basically what they are, and then the tests are very good too. Uh, let's see. The word of our Henry Russo. Mm. Sorry, I'm just reading some of your comments. Yeah, making mistakes is very much a learning process. Um, I would never, I, I went on a job interview once and I could tell that this guy was rather intolerant to mistakes. He would yell at people or he would fire them or make them scared of him. Well, I wasn't scared of him. I didn't need the job. In fact, I already had a job. I was just looking for something better. So part of the way through, I kind of thought, well, let's throw this guy a curveball. So I said to him, how do you deal with people that make mistakes? He kind of thought and tried to speak. And then I said, because I make mistakes. And I was waiting for one of two possible answers. One where he says, well, yes, we all make mistakes and people learn from them. He didn't even think of that. He thought of, this is no good. And I knew right then and there, this is not the guy I wanted to work for. So don't be afraid of making mistakes. And when you go on job interviews, don't be afraid to ask, how do they, talk, how do they deal with mistakes? Because all the smart people know that's how you learn. Well, guys, class is pretty much over. Normally, I stay around for a few minutes, but I've got a private teacher's meeting tonight. But I will be back.